Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. Welcome to today's edition of Helping Seniors Television from the Helping Seniors Network. Whether you are caring for a senior, are a senior, or just plan to be one, we hope you'll enjoy today's program. Have you heard the term Roth IRA? Join retirement financial expert August Felton CLU of August Felton & Associates and get insight into this unique retirement planning tool and learn the differences between traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs with program host Kerry Fink on this edition of Helping Seniors TV. I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors Television. I have the privilege of sitting in for our founder and host, uh, Joe Steckler. And uh, thanks for joining us today. I think you're going to find this show is very, very fascinating because we're going to talk about something that uh, is really, it's new for me to get a grip on. We've all heard the, time, uh, the, heard the term IRAs, but we're going to learn about a variation on that called Roth IRAs. And you may have heard that bandied about, but we're very fortunate that we have in the studio with us today, August Velton, CLU, which I got to ask you what that means. And uh, he's the uh, head of August Velton, CLU, and associate and sort of a financial expert with all of this. I want to, as we get into, welcome August, but I want to tell you as we get into this, there are several good resources on the Helping Seniors of Brevard website. You'll find us at helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Uh, we did a show with August where he talks about social security income and the importance of understanding that it's not simply just checking off the box and saying, I've reached the age requirement, I'm going to go for it, I'm going to take my social security. He explains really well some of the uh, nuances that you'll want to consider in your overall financial planning as far as that goes. We also did a show together with him called Retirement Planning and a very excellent program that gets you to back out, zoom the camera out, and think about all the financial ramifications that go with the process of moving from your work career to your retirement time. And then uh, we also have a show that you'll, you'll definitely want to participate in that we talk about annuities. And there's a lot of misinformation out there, but understanding the good part of annuities and understanding how they can be part of your retirement planning, it's also a show to check out. You can find all of those on the Helping Seniors website, Helping Seniors of Brevard.org. You can also find it on our Helping Seniors of Brevard YouTube channel. They're available on demand. Encourage you to find those resources. And today we're going to add another chapter to that. And this is all about Roth IRAs. So the logical question to begin with is, all I've heard is IRA. I'm not sure I understand what's the difference between, I guess you would call it a traditional IRA, and then this Roth IRA. Sure. Uh, the real difference is in one word, an IRA, and I'll, and I'll mention this, a 401k at work mm -hmm. is basically an IRA. Okay. It's just it's available through employment, all right? And it's got different uh, uh, limits to how much you can put in, but it's really an IRA. Mm -hmm. Treated slightly different when you get to seven and a half, we can talk about that, but an IRA is tax deferred, all right? Okay. So a tax deferral means that as you build up the dollars in your IRA or your 401k, you're just creating again that larger tax bill, which of course is what IRS is waiting for. In fact, let's just talk about this for a second. Uh, the amount of dollars that have accumulated in tax deferred vehicles, Kerry, are producing the highest revenue to the IRS in history. Wow. And you know why that is? because people are reaching seven and a half, baby boomers are reaching seven and a half, and they must take their distribution out of their tax deferred That's that vehicles. That's that right? Required minimum distribution, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of people that come to see me are annoyed. I mean, they see it coming, yeah. right? But now they have to take the money and they're really concerned because they, don't, they wanted that money for further down the road. Sure. Now they're being forced to take it. So let's just talk about RMD for a second, if you don't mind, because this is important. Sure. A required minimum distribution, 70 and a half. So let's say someone turns 70 and a half in 2019. Uh -huh. 
their IRA distribution that they have to take, their RMD, is based on the value of their IRA or IRAs on 1231 of 2018, the year before. Okay. Okay, they would get a letter in the mail saying, your fair market value of your IRA is X. Right. right? So sometimes during 2019, they're turning 70 and a half, they must take out their required minimum distribution. That number, the first year, take the value of the IRAs and divide it, not a percentage, you divide it by 26.5. It's an IRS chart, 26.5. Wow. And that tells you how much you have to take. It represents about 3.5%, somewhere in that vicinity, let's so say. So if you've been saving a long time. Well, it could be a number, but more importantly, that's the value as of 1231 of 2018. Let's say you take your RMD in June mm -hmm. and the market's down 20%. Oh, no. Okay, so what is happening? I have to take the RMD based on the 2000, the, the uh, 2018, 12, 31, 12, value. But now the value is down 20%. IRS does not care that you have a loss inside your IRA. Oh, no. Okay? So you must take 26.5 into that number and take it from money that you've already created a 20% loss on, or at least the market created that loss. Right. You still have to take it. So let's say you're in the 15% tax bracket. Sure. So you've lost 20% on your, your money to take it out. Oh, my goodness. Right? and 15% in mm -hmm. taxes, that's 35% shrinkage on those dollars. That's when people start worrying about running out of money. So okay. very important to understand how that's gonna work. And each year, as you get older, that divisor gets uh, smaller and smaller, which means you're taking out more and more as you get older. Mm -hmm. All right, so how do we fix that? One of the ways is to say, I'm gonna take some of these traditional IRA dollars, 401k dollars also, and convert them from tax-deferred growth to tax-free growth. Okay. Big difference. A Roth IRA does not require an RMD. Okay, so at seven and a half, those dollars, which are growing tax-free, you do not have to take. You can let them grow to a time in, in your retirement where inflation might be catching up. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, maybe the market for your market dollar, your dollars in the market might have been doing so well that you can create that. And the important point is this. If you have tax-free dollars, mm -hmm. it's make, gonna wait, make a world of difference to both you during your retirement, but also if you leave that money to a beneficiary, beneficiaries, they receive the dollars tax-free, ah. all right? So, you have dollars coming in that are tax-free. So your tax bracket, your taxes in general will be lower, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not reportable right. dollars. Sure. That means that if I wanna live at the same standard of living, I actually can use less money from my assets to create the dollars I need because I'm not giving a chunk back to the IRS. Right. So that's what, a, that's what a Roth is all about. Uh -huh. So if somebody says, well, that sounds attractive uh, because that would be a smart way for me to go as I move into that time of my life, how do people fund these? What, what, what are some ideas? So there are two ways to fund it. Uh, one is that uh, you can fund it if you're over 50, mm -hmm. $6,500 a year, uh -huh. okay? Many 401k plans now have Roth in inside their 401k, Okay. all right? But when you fund it, you're gonna pay the tax on the money that you put in. It's not tax deductible, it's not pre-tax. Right. But understand, so if I have $6,500 and I put it into a Roth, I paid the tax on the 6,500, but that 6,500 now is growing tax-free for as long as I want to let it grow. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm not required to take it at 70 and a half. I can let it grow. In fact, maybe I want to do that because I don't need that money at all, but I want to leave it to my children, for argument's right. sake, tax-free. Okay. okay. So Roth IRA, you put it in, 6,500. But let's say someone comes in to see me or they've come to my class. I had a class last night, in fact, a social security okay. class last night, and there was a question about this. And the question is, well, you know, I, I'm going to retire in three years. I don't have a Roth. Uh -huh. I, all I can do is put in $6,500. That's not going to get me very far. Right. right. Well, there's another way to do this. You can take a traditional IRA. Let's take the, the, the logistical steps. I have a 401k, let's say. Okay. I can take money from my 401k and bring it over as an IRA outside my 401k. Okay. Then I can take that IRA and start converting it from IRA, traditional IRA, to Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. All right? So there's a process that I can do to get that. That's called recategorization. There is no limit on how much I can do every oh. year. There's no limit on, on uh, whether I'm working or not, and there's no limit on income I'm earning. 
I can recategorize as much as I want. And once it's recategorized again, it grows tax free. So, oh, well, wait a minute, I have to pay tax when I move it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, sure, but again, if I'm moving this much and I pay tax on this, mm -hmm. all right, but it grows to this, right. I, all those extra dollars are tax free. Those dollars, somebody says, oh, it's going to grow tax free, but when I take the money out, I have to pay tax. So I said, no, that, that would be tax deferral. This right. is tax free. You won't pay tax on it. Nobody's going to pay tax on those dollars, okay. all right? Whether they inherit them or it's for your own use or whatever, no taxation. So you're kind of getting that bite out of the way early so that you can benefit from the growth of the dollars as you go exactly. along. Exactly. So, so that also becomes a, a question by itself then. Um, because it, it's often been said, it doesn't matter what your gross is, it matters really what the net is after you've paid your tax bill and done all that. And so how would the tax-free income impact when you sit down with somebody and you say, let's figure out the best way to use your money in retirement? Absolutely. And it impacts it several ways. I see articles, by the way, all the time. They say, well, you want to, you want to convert IRA to Roth if the dollars that you convert are going to be taxed differently, in other words, you're not going to lose ground or whatever, and they're missing a big point, mm -hmm. it's I'm going to convert IRA dollars to Roth, and then they're going to grow over time. Okay. So it's not just, well, if it's a finite amount of dollars, you know, 50000 here goes to a Roth 50000 here, are you going to pay less tax or more tax? In other words, because you're going to pay tax to move it. Right. How do you make that up? It's, they're, they're missing the point. The point is to do it and then let it grow for a period of time. Sure. But here's, a, here's another important piece of the puzzle. There are two things when you retire, and it's called means tested, based on income. One is Medicare B, right. okay? and the other is um, Social Security. Now, Social Security, from my previous mm -hmm. show, is tax advantage dollars. Not all your Social Security is taxed. Right. Well, how is that figured? It's figured by something called provisional income. It's a calculation Social Security does, mm -hmm. okay, to figure out how much of your Social Security benefit coming in your household mm -hmm. needs to be included in your taxable income. Sure. So, off the top of my head, I might have done this previously, but I'm going to do it again. Sure. Let's say a couple has $44,000 of taxable income coming in the door. Let's say it's uh, pension money or IRA money or whatever. It's coming in the door, taxable income. Provisional income is all the taxable income plus half the Social Security coming right. in the door. So let's say that that couple has $24,000 of Social Security coming in the door. Right. Half of that is $12,000. Wow. Add that to, to $44,000 coming in the door as taxable. That gives you a number, 56000 mm -hmm. That's your provisional income. Right. Okay? Then there's a chart. It says, okay, well, how does that work then? So what you do is you work down the calculations. And that, in that particular situation, I can tell you that that couple would have to include of $24,000, $16,200 into their taxable income mm -hmm. that year. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the rest would be non-taxable. Right. Now, let's say that the 44000 now is no longer taxable because it's Roth. Okay. So dollars are coming are tax free. Okay. Forty four thousand, half of that is tax free, it's twenty two thousand. Mm -hmm. Not included in provisional income. Right. Now you have twenty two thousand, half of your social security twelve, thirty four thousand dollars. I know this from the top of my head right, because right, I do right, it all right. right? Thirty four thousand dollars. So you have these brackets, thirty four thousand dollars to get to your requirement for how much you have to include there are, there are thresholds. The first threshold is $32,000, uh -huh. subtracted from $34,000, $2,000. Right? Uh -huh. Half of that would be includable in your taxable income. How much is that of $24,000? $1,000. dollars How much of your dollars coming in the door? That The forty-four used to be all taxable. Now right. half is, right? So now, if you take sure. what's coming in your door, $44,000, right. the total amount of Social Security, 24000 add those two together, $68,000. Right. Of $68,000, you're going to pay tax on $23,000. Right. That's what Roth is all about. That's why it makes so much sense to think about the after-tax implications of what well, you're doing. If you're, if you're paying less tax, yeah. you're losing, uh, using less of your assets, mm -hmm. or you're living better right. because you're not supporting the IRS. You're not in a partnership any long, longer with those dollars. You own those dollars. 
they're growing tax-free. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about RMDs. You don't have to worry that, that you're impacting your Social Security benefit more than you need to. Right. And you're not impacting Medicare B. Medicare B right now is about, hundred. I'm going to call $135 a month. Okay. Somewhere it's $134, $137. Sure. But it's means-tested. If somebody is starting to show a fairly large amount of income, mm -hmm. they pay more and more for Medicare oh, B. Oh, I see. Means-tested, right? So all these things, when you put it together, or reason, two, two reasons. One, to have Roth, and secondly, by the way, to wait on taking your Social Security because it's tax advantage. Yeah, I want to take, it's a little bit of a side tour, but I want to explain, uh, viewers, if you're not aware, uh, August is an instructor in a group called AFES, and you guys do seminars where you actually, this is a nonprofit organization, right. it's separate from what you do as a financial right. planner and, and retirement expert, but it's where you actually go out and you teach courses on college campuses to help people get a grip on these kind of right. things. Tell us a little bit about that and how well, people sure. get involved. Uh, for, for a number of years now, uh, I teach uh, classes uh, on these types of things at the uh, uh, Florida Institute of Technology, mm -hmm. FIT, mm -hmm. and also the Government Center up in Vieira. Oh, sure. All right? And uh, they're educational, and it's, it's again, they're, they're meant to create uh, financial literacy, mm -hmm. all right, so people have better ideas on what their options are and what options to choose. And what I teach in my Social Security class as an example is that you can't go down to the Social Security office and go online and choose your Social Security. You have that, that you can't do it in a vacuum. You have to look at all your pieces. Mm -hmm. When should I really take my Social Security? Mm -hmm. Should I have a Roth IRA? How am I going to be taxed? Mm -hmm. uh, all those types of things. So tax efficiency in retirement is just as important as tax efficiency when you were working. Yeah. All right. Makes maybe, a big maybe difference. So. Maybe so. So if somebody wanted to find out about these classes, how would they do that? Two things. One, call my office, 321-622-5418, or go to August Velton, just like the month, August, A-U-G-U-S-T-V-E-L-T-E-N, uh, and uh, dot com, and you'll go to my website. From the website, you can go to the AFES website, which is the nonprofit organization, and look up the classes that are currently scheduled in the area, and uh, click on it, and it'll sh come up with, I would be the instructor here in this area, and you'll be able to uh, register and come to those classes that are coming up. Or call the office and say, I want to I want to sure. attend. Sure. All right. So let's go back to this conversation about Roth IRAs. So what products, you know, say, OK, that sounds like a good strategy for me. So now I'm going to commit some funds over to Roth IRA. Okay. What, what, what products could I use? Right. Again, I, that's a very good question, because if you're very aggressive in the market, say, wow, tax free growth, tax free appreciation. I'm going to have my Roth in the market, which mm -hmm. you can do. You can, you can you know, invest in mutual funds and such mm -hmm. as a Roth IRA. It's oh. an avenue to do so. Understanding that, what you're doing with your Roth IRA is trying to create what? Tax-free income in the future. Mm -hmm. Tax-free in income in the future. Well, what can you count on for tax-free income in the future when you're in the market? What do you think your investments are going to be worth in the market? How much income can you take out? We don't know, right? Right. So my preference is to take money out of the market, the risk market, put it into the annuity column, the uh -huh. guarantee column, all right, and then as an IRA, mm -hmm. and then convert inside that that category, that protection category, from IRA, traditional IRA, to Roth. Now, what do you get from that? You get tax-free growth that you know what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Your principal are protected, and when you trigger, we call it trigger. When you trigger that annuity for your lifetime income. It then becomes lifetime tax-free income. Okay. Okay. So some people will say, "Oh, I, I like the market. I'm going to do the market." Other people say, "No, I want an annuity." And the, the third column would be, "I want some in both. I want some in the market, right? right? And I'll play the the game." But as we get older, we don't want to be playing the game in the investment market anymore. We need to protect what we have. We we can't make mistakes. Right. Well, well that kind of leads in actually to the next question. So. So what if somebody sets one of these up and they go, well, I don't know if I'm going to use all the money uh, before I go on. Uh, maybe I want to think about, you know, my heirs or things like that. What if I don't use all the funds? Sure. If it's still traditional IRA. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the, an inherited IRA then, right? Uh -huh. Person dies, they have an IRA, and let's say the children inherit that IRA. Okay. If somebody, let's say, were to pass 2019 mm -hmm. and the children inherit that IRA. Now we're talking about a non-spousal IRA for a second. Okay. Children inherit that IRA. 
they must take a distribution from that IRA by the end of the year following death. So in 2020, oh. by the end, they must take a distribution and pay tax. Oh. IRS wants their taxes. Right? The difference is that the younger they are, the less they would have to take for what would be considered the required minimum distribution. Okay. All right? Now, if it's a spousal IRA, and it's not been and it's not been triggered, et cetera, et cetera, not seven and a half yet. A spousal IRA is is inherited by the spouse and, and remains a spousal IRA. Mm -hmm. The spouse actually owns that IRA now. Okay. Okay, and they can do whatever they want. Where an inherited IRA, by the way, is always let's say the person's name is John Smith. Okay. Passes away and the children or you know whoever it's always the John Smith IRA. It's never changed. Okay. Because it's inherited, right? right. So there's certain rules. So a spousal IRA is much more powerful than an inherited IRA. Okay. All right. Now, if the spouse has, or if the person has an IRA inside of an annuity, the spouse actually inherits the annuity, okay. the same thing, and can do whatever that spouse wants to do okay. with that money and not touch it if they don't want to until they're 70 and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there are different little glitchy rules that we have right. to deal with, but that's how it works. And so the, the important thing is that if it becomes Roth, anybody who gets that money, it's going to be tax-free. Uh -huh. right, if we have a minute, I want to talk about a specific sure. situation just sure. to let you know. It all sounds good, but I have a situation, unfortunately, right now, of a client who is terminally ill. Mm. She's going to pass away definitely this year, during this year. The money, she's got one daughter, and she's going to leave the money to the daughter. Mm. The daughter has a 14-year-old uh, autistic son. Oh. All right pays $3,000 a month. Well, a state right now is paying $3,000 a month for medication plus a bunch of other expenses. You know, it's a fairly severe case. Sure. So, if, and unfortunately, if that daughter inherits, even if it's Roth, right, now she has assets and income. Oh, Going to disqualify the whole dynamics change. All of a sudden, the responsibility would be on her shoulders. Now, she only works part-time because she's bringing up two children, sure. one autistic. And uh, so what would happen is that she would spend down probably all those assets would really, which were meant for her future income in this mm -hmm. case. So what we've done is that we created a uh, special needs trust. Mm -hmm. all right, not an attorney. I have a trust attorney right, that I use. Right. Right? A special needs trust. <coughs> that trust is the beneficiary now of those annuities in this in this case, mm -hmm. all right? And in fact, in this case, the annuity that's just one, she's got more than one, but this one, the, the larger one, actually allows her to take a full distribution without any penalties or surrender fees because she's terminally ill. And she can take that if she wants to put in a trust, but the simpler thing to do is at her death, the proceeds from, those, from that annuity uh, will go to the trust as a special needs trust. So therefore, the child will remain getting those dollars and the and the and the, the mother in this case will have dollars for her future income which she's going to need right well this is this is why it is so important to be strategic and understanding what you're doing uh like that and and i guess that that's a question is then if we think about it what age should somebody start thinking about funding a roth ira as early as possible is my okay. all right uh as early as possible in fact somebody who's fairly young it might not be a bad idea to fund it inside of a investment vehicle. Okay. Okay. A mutual fund or whatever, or uh, ETFs these days, exchange traded funds, uh, and a lot of 401ks now of, uh, have available Roth inside the 401k. Mm -hmm. They should be making use of that. Why? Many, many m more years of tax-free growth compared to tax-deferred okay. growth. Okay. So when people come to me, what should I tell my child? What should they do? I say, have them open up a Roth IRA, okay. especially if they can do it inside of a 401k. If not, then they should do a Roth IRA and put as much money as they can into it each year. Maybe they can do a Roth as well as having a 401k. There are certain rules, but they could probably do that. If the household income, I think this year is like, a, I'm going to guess here for a second, 190,000 household income, you can still do a Roth contribution even if you have a 401k. Now, if somebody has a, a question, because it sounds like Everybody's case is going to have unique, unique exactly. considerations. Um, how does somebody set up an appointment to, to sit down and go through these kind of questions so that uh, they can share with you information about their own finances and then you can 
direct them. Is that a costly process? Does it cost them to, to come good and sit? Good question. Very good question. I'm old fashioned. I don't charge a penny for planning. If I can help somebody, I will. If they wind up on the same page and we have, we have a, a, pro, a process where we can create an income model and work with that income model, that's like a roadmap. In fact, what I say on my, on my cards are it's mapping out your retirement. If somebody's younger, then you're going to be mapping out their future, right? right? All right? If they're if getting ready for retirement, mapping out your retirement, knowing step one, step two, step three, how to get from point A to point B, point B to point C. And they can, again, call 321-622-622. 5418, and Karen normally will be there. That's, she's my assistant, and she'll give you times that are open slots uh, that are available. So they could take, you know, so there's several different avenues. Number one, they could say, listen, I just want to take the course and start to expand my own understanding so they could get involved with the courses that you do through the AFES. Uh, Adult Financial Educational Services is a nonprofit organization. So that's one step, right. but maybe even more valuable is if they say, well, this, why would you not? If it's not going to, it's no obligation, so you're going to sit down, right. you're going to say, well, here's the pieces of the sure. puzzle I've got. Right. What would you suggest I do with it? That's going to be a free process. Sure. And I would say that uh, my schedule is getting pretty tight. I'm sure. Right? So uh, if somebody wants to call into the office and make an appointment, as long as they're serious about getting them, you know, getting the information and getting straight down. Again, if they have fewer assets than others, let's yeah. say, but they need help, I'm more than willing to help them. All right. But in general, I want people that will make an appointment because they're, they're actually, you know, they want to fix their situation, understand where to go and, and set up a, a program. Right. And why? Because there's only so many hours in the day. And if right. somebody comes in that's not really serious, it's All right, they're taking somebody else's time. time. Exactly. So what's the number again if they're going to give you a call? 321-622-5418. All right. Thanks again for joining us today. You want to take advantage of all these programs that you can find. General information on the Helping Seniors website. Make sure you find out about the AFES courses. And make sure you give August a call and, and look at the particulars of your situation. Thanks, August, for being on the show. All right. all right. And thank you, viewer, for being part of this today on Helping Seniors Television. I'm Joe Steckler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.